from the expectation from beginning detox to ending detox, they should expect some level of discomfort. We use medications that help with the symptoms of withdrawal. We start tapering you down off of this, this drug. You're going to experience some discomfort, but it is it pales in comparison to detoxing on your own. Patients will be seen, we have day shift and night shift, they work 12 hour shifts. Patients will be evaluated by the nurse and staff every morning when they come in to, on the shift. They'll see a medical provider or a psych provider every day that they're on a detox protocol, which could last five to seven days. Once that's done, then they go to residential level of care and they're still available to see the nurse and staff, of course, and the medical providers are here for them. Once you've completed the detox process, a lot of times people think they're all done and ready to go. Truthfully, at that point, there's a lot of very uncomfortable emotions that are coming to the surface, things that people haven't felt in a long time because they've been using drugs or alcohol to numb those. So that's when the real work really starts and that's when people need a lot of support to stay the course. After detox, clients go into residential treatment and that's where they live in a home with other clients. They go to groups during the day and learn skills to stay sober long term or deal with other mental health issues or emotional struggles they have. There's staff there that supervise them 24 seven and give them the support they need during the day. They'll see their therapist, they'll see the psychiatrist, they'll see their case manager who's a drug and alcohol counselor. In between groups, you know, they, I always see them throwing around a football. The music room's always open and kicking off. There's plenty of things for them to keep busy during the day to take off some of the weight of some of the things we do discuss in those individual sessions and more intimate group sessions. Typically in the last week, they'll transition to a PHP level of care, partial hospitalization program, uh, acronyms all over the place. They live off campus. We bus them to and from for all those clinical groups and for their individual sessions, Monday through Friday. With PHP, it's kind kind of like the test, like they get to go to the store and they get to see those bottles behind the counter and they get to make those right choices and empower themselves to say, hey, I can get through this. And usually, you know, they take groups with them so that they, they do it together. And it's a team building camaraderie type thing that happens in PHP. Right before they go, they coin out and that's our farewell and, and we give them their certificate and, and we give them those last like, all right, watch out for this. All right, you got to do this. All right, you know, this is one of your red flags and give them that last pep talk. Um, they all have my number when they leave and my hope is that they text me or they call me and they let me know. I had a client who called me last month. He got a year and he got married. And the person he married was his emergency contact who I spoke with all through his treatment stay. And so it was one of those small victories that I was like, yes, he did it. His life was being fulfilled at home and he did what he wanted to do. Like we talked about these things and for him to actually get to do those and walk that path that we had laid out for him and encouraged him and empowered him that he could do in his life, he was doing it. That was amazing.